To celebrate the new year, we're having the biggest sale ever on overstock clearance and brand new products. For example, save 60% on our Goose Down comforters, the best comforters ever. They go perfectly with our MyPillow bed sheets and duvet covers. Save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels. They're made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. Our initial quantities are extremely low, so get them now before they go. Our seasonal flannel sheets are finally in. You save up to 50% and they sell out fast every year, so order now. They're truly the best flannel sheets you'll ever sleep on. Or save up to 80% on all our clearance items. And this is where it gets even better. For a limited time, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. Hi, friends, and welcome to another episode of Gene Valentino's Grassroots Truth Cast. My guest this week is a very interesting gentleman. He's a Christian. He's a spiritualist. He's a technology geek like I used to be. He's an entrepreneur, and he's a man who's trying to preserve and protect this democratic, this constitutional republic set within the confines of a, dem a democracy. Friends, let's welcome Sean Patrick Tario. Welcome aboard, Sean. Thank you, sir. Glad to be here. And the reason, this is crazy, the reason we have uh, have you here today is because we our backgrounds are so similar. Frankly, at this moment, I can't tell you how we connected, but the fact is I'm glad we did. We have so much in common on so many levels. And one of the things I want to talk about is how you ended up in this era of technology and AI and how it has a spiritual foundation for you. The company you formed in, in, in trying to protect uh, citizens from an overreach of government and um, special corporations, large behemoths. And we're gonna talk to Sean about that in particular right after this. Hi friends, Gene Valentino from the Grassroots Truthcast. You've gotta join us not only for the great shows and entertainment and guests, but you got to join us because our sponsorship is growing and it would mean a lot to them, not to mention me, if you come on board. And the one we're featuring this week is Luis Sanchez from The Cigar Shop. He owns a company called La Tradición Cubana. The Cigar Shop, Miami, Florida, since 1995. This Luis is really one heck of a guy. He's determined to manufacture cigars based on an unprecedented excellence in quality using old-fashioned Cuban methods. Uh, the cigar isn't always cheaper, but it is better. And if, like you're drinking a fine wine, you got to have a fine cigar, look for Luis Sanchez at the cigar shop. He helped me find a nice Connecticut wrapper with a Nicaraguan blend. And uh, this cigar has become not only my, my enjoyment, but this cigar has also become my brand and my marketing tool. If you notice up close, we've got a little label he's put on there for me. It's called, it's, and that's my website, genevalentino.com. Uh, it's at the Grassroots Truthcast. Now, here's the deal. You go to thecubanshop.com. Find the cigar you want, and Luis will get, throw in the labels for free. But you got to tell him Gene sent you. Tell Luis Gene sent you. The labels are free. These are fifty to a hundred dollar values based on the count, and uh, you can get this to become part of your branding experiment. I'm using this with my guests on the Grassroots Truth Casts. This could be your brand on your product, your service anywhere in the world. Look for Luis Sanchez at thecubanshop.com. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy your smoke. Hi, folks, and welcome back to Gene Valentino's Grassroots Truthcast. My guest this week is Sean Patrick Tario. What an interesting guy. He's a, a father. He's an entrepreneur. He's a siege state investor, an author, organizer, He's an Americanist. I want to ask him about that. And um, a Christ-loving patriot uh, who is 
basically had a change in life, something similar to what's happened to me in my life. But he's not afraid to work on the front lines on this war of, uh, of, of Marxism and socialism that we're fighting against where the oligarchs seem to be taking over the individual freedoms we have. Is that How does that sound, Sean? Yeah, 100%, Gene. And I think the, the key is this. Let me ask you and your listeners a quick question, and I think it'll help frame the rest of our conversation, if you don't mind. Please, go ahead. So we're at war, right? Clearly, we're at war. Enemies, foreign, domestic, spiritual as well, right? So if we're at war, and we can all agree that we're at war, and I give you a weapon to go fight in this war, and I tell you that this weapon has a GPS tracking device on it, it has a camera, and it has a microphone on it, but all of that information and all of that data is being fed back to the enemy that you're about to go fight. Would you use that weapon in this battle? I would not. Of course not, right? That's ridiculous. Why, why would you? Because you're just setting yourself up for, for failure. And unfortunately, that's exactly the paradigm that we live in today because these devices, these phones and our laptops are literally weapons, psychological warfare weapons They've been designed to be that from day one through the grants that funded Google and grants that funded Microsoft through the DOD and DARPA. They've been designed through all the trillions of dollars that have been spent to serve as psychological warfare weapons. And they're owned and operated by the likes of Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon are the big four companies, big tech companies that own and operate the operating systems on these devices. And I think that we can all agree that the executives and the ownership, the equity ownership in these businesses is part of the same World Economic Forum, United Nation, globalist elite that wants a depopulation agenda. And they want to exterminate those who think and believe like you and I, Gene. So if that's the case, why are we continuing to use these weapons and these tools that are literally controlled and owned by the very people they're trying to exterminate us. Okay, that's a broad statement, and I know it's true. Uh, as a sidebar, uh, I didn't know this was coming up in this light, but I won the lottery back in the 1980s when the federal government was interested in not having the ultra-rich oligarchs take control of our society, but where they wanted John Q and Jane Q public to step up and be owners of things that monopolies were controlling. And I won the lottery in a cellular telephone process controlled by the FCC. And we owned a whole central region in California. And what you're saying is absolutely true. We moved from an old analog version at the time to digital, but what was uh, coming true at even back in the late eighties was a transition that the phone was more than a phone. It was a data monster that was collecting data on so many levels and using it and misusing it. Go ahead and pick up from there. Yeah, I mean, so I spent the vast majority of my career in Silicon Valley, literally working right off of Sand Hill Road, uh, going back and forth between San Francisco and San Jose and Santa Clara on a regular basis. And as an entrepreneur and as a seed stage investor and mentor in a lot of different businesses out there, what became very obvious very quickly for all of the venture capital firms and private equity firms is that if you did not have a data strategy in your pitch to these VCs, you would not get funding, right? So no matter what the company was that you were trying to roll out, whether it was tech or not tech, if you didn't have some plan to capture people's data and to leverage that data and sell that data, they were not interested in funding your business. So data has been for a very long time what they call the new oil, right? So people are constantly looking for ways and creative ways to harvest and mine data to the degree right now where you and I and everybody on the planet almost has a profile and that profile has everything that they could possibly imagine about you. It has who you're connected to, the conversations that you've had that have been recorded, uh, the text messages that you've sent, 
the websites that you visited, what you have bought, where you've bought it, where you've gone, the list goes where you've worked, your income status. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. All of this is tied to your profile and they share this profile. So all the big tech companies share these profiles and they leverage that to then sell you to companies that want to target you. So you have a dollar amount that is tied to your profile based on your demographics. If you are super wealthy and you come from a certain region, you might be worth, you know, way more money than someone who's not, right? Someone who's in a more harder economic situation living in a different demographic area, right? Um, so they're constantly reselling you without you even knowing it over and over and over again because they have access to all of this data. So that's one of the first things that I think people really don't understand is how much data has been collected, is being collected. And the other piece of this, because it's been spun to the marketplace as, well, this is great for marketing, right? Because if I know all this information about someone, I can better predict their behavior. I can better predict how to influence them to buy certain things. But I think you and I both know, and probably your listeners have an idea of this, the three-letter agencies that control the intelligence apparatus, not just in our country, but around the world, who have been working with each other for a very long time, also leverage that same data in the ability to influence your behavior because they know so much about you to steer you in certain directions and to influence how you think and act and react to certain uh, events that might be happening or that they don't want you to know about, they can just make them disappear, right? So you have no idea about certain genocides that might be going on in Africa or in China or wherever they might be going on. Um, so okay, to that let, degree, let me yeah. let me help you jump ahead. Then explain Mark three seven and the term ghost phone and ghost laptop. Sure. So. Mark 3, 7 actually comes from scripture. So one of our co-founders and I was, were praying in the morning and we were trying to actually find a name for the business. And uh, we were actually just reading through Mark at that point. And we were reading through how Christ had uh, healed, you know, the cripple on the, on the Sabbath and the Pharisees went after him and they tried to pin him to the wall and say, hey, you can't do this. Uh, and he basically proved that they were hypocrites and that they were ludicrous in, in what they were trying to, to claim. Uh, and so he knew that the Herodites and the Pharisees were going to come after him. So it says he went down to the sea and the multitudes followed him from all over. And it lists about a dozen different regions where people just dropped everything and they left to go follow Christ down, down to the sea. So I believe that we're living in those times right now. I believe that people are seeking truth and they're leaving the comfort of the paradigm reality that they've grown up in and that they're accustomed to, to go seek truth. Uh, because if you imagine back then, people didn't know where they were gonna sleep. They didn't know what they were gonna eat. They didn't know where they were gonna go to the bathroom. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't know all these things, but they just said, there's this guy who's doing these amazing things, miracles, preaching a gospel and preaching a message that we've never heard before. We need to go follow that. So they left everything to go follow that. So. I believe that, again, we're living in those times. So that's where we were looking at this. We said Mark 3, 7 uh, is very interesting because if you look at the three, what is the three in lead speak? You probably know this. What does the three represent? Uh, the Trinity. Well, the, yes, but in lead speak, so it's it's also uh, translates to the, the letter E, right? So the oh, yeah. three is the letter E, right? And the seven is the letter T. Right. So what does M-A-R-K-E-T spell? Mark it. Right. Market. So Mark three, seven also spells market. Um, so eventually we want to get to a place where we can offer all products and services to help people live a more sovereign lifestyle. Uh, the tip of the spear right now for us is the technology piece. So that is the ghost phones and the ghost laptops and helping people migrate off of Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and all these different operating systems and devices that are literally controlled by the enemy. So okay, I'm going to come to yeah. that in just a second, but explain uh, what you're doing on Mark 3, 7, the company, as it pertains to ghost phones and ghost laptops. Sure. So the phones themselves are running an open source operating system. So what that means is you now own your phone. You control your phone. Apple, Google, 
Microsoft, they don't control your phone. You now control your phone. They're not doing anything in the background without your knowledge. They're not going to be installing some kind of new tracker, some, you know, pandemic trap tracker on the background without your knowledge, which they've done and they continue to do. Um, you don't, you're not going to have apps on here that you can't remove because they've made some marketing deal with the NFL or whatever um, that's constantly pulling your own data. So this device becomes your device and that's key. They're not involved in the process. That doesn't mean that you can't install, you know, Facebook or TikTok on the device. You totally can. You can install any application you want on this device, but you now give that application what authority it has on your device. So you determine if you want to give it access to your contacts, your Wi-Fi, your GPS, whatever it might be. That's now up to you. And you get a notification that says, hey, this application is asking for this access versus what the paradigm is now. You click, yes, I agree to the user, user terms of service. And then instantly it gets access to all these things. And you, you don't know if it really, what it has access to. And in even fact, if you go it has in and so you... much, it has such a broad access that we sometimes find ourselves in the situation of wondering what we actually gave up. Exactly. And yeah. most people have no idea. And even if you go into that application's settings and you say, I don't want to give this thing access to X, Y, and Z, it may still have access, which there's court case after court case that's proven that Google and Apple and Facebook and the rest of these companies are still gaining access to all of this data, despite the fact that the user said, no, I don't want you to have this access, right? So on these devices, you now have full control. You control what it does and does not have access to. And everything is done for the most part on the device itself. So there's a mapping application. We preload about 25 different applications on the devices that are open source. And the way the vast majority of them operate is that everything is done on the device. So okay, put your advertising pitch in now. It's mark37.com, correct? Correct. Yeah, mark37.com. So you can find tools and applications um, and training and uh, lots of articles that walk you through how to live a more digitally sovereign lifestyle and private lifestyle uh, with your data. One of the things I found very interesting when I was researching a little bit about you is that... Um, you made a comment that really hit me. Um, uh, big tech is who you feel we should be boycotting. Uh, uh, not uh, That's more important than going after Target and Netflix and Disney and Bud Light and the rest of them. But uh, explain that distinction. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty simple, right? So we have all these talking heads in the media saying, rah, let's boycott Bud Light. Um, you know, let's boycott all Target. And all, like you said, Ben and Jerry's and all these different Liberty safes, right? And yet we're not talking about boycotting the companies that are exponentially more responsible for the existing paradigm that we're in now. Exponentially more responsible. They spend orders of magnitude more every single month and every year on candidates, causes, and organizations that are directly attacking our sovereignty as a country because they're supporting organizations that want to demolish the whole concept of nation states. They're supporting the organizations that are pushing for central bank digital currencies. They're supporting the organizations that are pushing, pushing for social credit scores so that you can or can't even have access to your bank account based on if they agree with your way of thinking. Um, and they're supporting literally politicians and other you know, local state officials who are pushing straight communism into our country. So how and why it is that we don't have more people openly advocating that we start to boycott these companies and we start to shift our resources into organizations and companies that are actually supporting a sovereign, liberty-focused um, way of living and lifestyle is just... It's infuriating to me to say the least, which is why I'm so passionate about this right now. Folks, we're talking with Sean Patrick Terrio. He's um, he's uh, got a very interesting technology background, spiritual background, and an economic business background. He's um, merging those philosophies and ways of life together in his current uh, uh, operation, working through his company, Mark37.com. Again, www.mark37.com. 
Facebook.com. Very interesting. You know, one of the concerns I have uh, ties right to TikTok. It's a bill before the House and Senate right now, uh, Patrick. Uh, your comments about the extent of the TikTok bill, the intent to encroach or limit uh, TikTok's use in the United States. Yeah, I think there's a big misconception about TikTok and what this bill is really focused on and what this bill is about. Um, there are those who say, oh, well, TikTok is a Chinese company um, and that a lot of this data is being fed straight back to, to the CCP, which I don't doubt that that's happening in the slightest. Um, but what I do know is that there's a, a there's a lot of information that is being shared on TikTok that is not allowed on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or some of these other social platforms that are part of the big tech alliance. Uh, so for from that perspective, TikTok is a threat to the current paradigm and the current reality. Um, we also know that the there are certain organizations that have been lobbying, spending hundreds of millions of dollars lobbying to have TikTok basically expunged and 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 um, uh, basically removed from the United States, and that includes Facebook. It includes um, some other interesting parties that are part of this World Economic Forum and United Nations cabal. And they don't want the narrative to reach young people specifically. And so when we have younger people waking up and talking about what's really happening in the world uh, that are not just accepting the narrative coming from mainstream media, they don't want that. They don't want to hear that. And if they can't control it, they want to control it. So what the TikTok bill is doing that I don't think people understand is it's now giving carte blanche uh, the ability for our White House, for the White House and the Biden administration to deem any one of these social media platforms a threat and to take them down and to remove them. And personally, I don't think that power should be with the current administration, let alone our government, period. Right. Um, yeah, I'd that's like really to make an issue. I'd like to make a distinction with you and tell me if you agree. Uh, on the business economic level, on the U.S. foreign trade level, I do agree with Donald Trump when it comes to issues related to foreign trade. If you're not going to trade with us on the same level we're trading with you, all bets are off. Said differently, China should not even be in the United States if they refuse to have allow us in their country to trade, whether it's on their own Chinese markets or physical sites of business activity in their country. That's point number one. I distinguish that from the right to free speech. If TikTok is, de is, is denied Chinese involvement uh, in the United States, and if TikTok is owned by a uh, nationalized, a, a, a domesticated corporation, that doesn't mean we need to change TikTok's paradigm on how they're, and their, um, the nuances, the heuristics on how they operate. Said differently, the algorithms that are inherent in TikTok that have been accused of providing information to China would no longer be information to China if China didn't own TikTok. So while it's true those same sorts of algorithms exist with Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, name me six more, uh, the 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 fact of the matter is those al uh, um, algorithms exist right now. My problem is, is that they have an ability to self-protect themselves and to create what, uh, uh, and do harm to the nation in a way we haven't experienced until now. And let me make my point, one, uh, take it one step further. Back in the early 80s, when I won this lottery uh, for a cellular telephone license in uh, the central area of California, it was on the heels of uh, Judge Green at the federal court level 
uh, breaking up Ma Bell, AT&T. AT&T got broken up into hundreds of baby bells around the nation. And the purpose was to decentralize and remove the concept of monopoly and centralized control away from businesses. Now, it took on many flavors of change, AT&T in particular, and the bells over the years. Uh, but uh, that's because a new, new technologies em uh, emerged, including cellular, including uh, now streaming services and everything internet and web-based, which is even obsolating cable TV as we know it today. My point to you is this, China gets out of the country and that, that achieves one of your objectives about adverse foreign influence that are imp imp impugning our level of freedom. Point one. Point two, what are we doing? What are we doing denying um, uh, a competition and, and disallowing John Q and Jane Q public, you and me, from having a right to participate in this economic opportunity? After all, it was only, I mean, there's no lotteries today for cellular licenses. That's a technology and a process that government managed that the current type of government today doesn't believe in. What say you? Yeah, so a big thing that you were talking about too, 100% agree with, um, you know, we're at war with China. They're at war with us. They're unapologetic about saying it on a regular basis. And yet anyone in the U.S. who says that we're at war with China has to instantly say, mea culpa, mea culpa, we're so sorry, we didn't mean to offend you, China, right? It's like clown world logic going on. Yeah. But the other key thing is, why are we going to spend so many resources and instantly push through this bill on TikTok, like literally came out of nowhere and was sent through and passed within a week or two? Yeah. If China's influence is so damaging, which it is, why are we not preventing them from buying land, buying landmarks? buying real estate, buying projects, buying companies in the United States. Like the hypocrisy of this is so obvious to anyone who's remotely paying attention that you can't say, oh, it's because we want to get TikTok out of the big tech, you know, cabal in the U.S. and they're pushing, peddling block. B.S. It's because our three letter agencies can't control the narrative that is taking place on those platforms and well, they don't like it. Is it possible that we're eating this elephant one bite at a time and maybe those three letter agencies and the, well, there's a concept we have in this nation. It's called eminent domain. I mean, we can take back uh, from certain, just by the rule of Congress, the land that has been uh, adversely taken from us. It's our nation. And I think that that is still, we don't talk in those terms, China does. But we don't talk in turn. Can you imagine having a business in, in Beijing and they get a, 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 sour, a sour tone about me or my company? Do you think they couldn't come in and just wipe me off the, the block on the street corner that I was operating on? They of would. course they could. Yeah, of course they could. But we're so squeamish and scared to do that here as if there's something wrong with that logic. If there's a foreign adversary about to take this nation down, why can we not be more aggressive with your ghost phone and your ghost laptop and your other technologies you're suggesting to the citizens and becoming more proactive in convincing them to stand up and stand out and uh, be uh, confrontational with those people who are trying to destroy us? Where's the sheepish? I mean, you're correct. It started with TikTok. But uh, between us guys and gals, I, I don't think, um, I mean, they just had to start somewhere. What do you say? Yeah, between here and November, I think we're going to see the, the world is going to be a very different place over the next few months, oh. unfortunately. Um, people think we've already been through hell and back over the last couple of years, which we have. I think it's going to get even worse. They're going to push everything. At this point, they it's obvious. They don't care about the Constitution. The right. ends justify the means. And to that end, they're going to say and do whatever they possibly can to force us into a position where we have this controlled demolition going on with the economy, with everything going on to try to force the public into a position where when they roll out this new system, 
people will be forced to accept it because they're going to be so desperate and so in need. And even with this upcoming election, I don't know about you, Gene, but it, I would be stunned if we have a, you know, a drama free November. Right. And that it comes out the end. It's just like Trump wins by a landslide. It's just so overwhelming. There's no way that's going to happen, because even if it does, I think both sides are going to be at each other saying that they both claim victory at the same time. And it's going to lead to mass pandemonium and mass chaos. Uh, well, those who think sta that, they know, started it in the last election when they attempted to manipulate the election. I don't care what anyone says. You're not going to tell me there was not an inordinate higher level oppressive, egregious level of voter fraud, vote, voter ballot manipulation. You're not going to tell me that was consistent with historically what's been happening in the past. They were out to get Donald Trump and the three-letter agencies you described earlier admitted so much, especially in the um, Russia collusion hoax yeah. uh, uh, in, information that came out uh, that showed what... Uh, James Clapper and uh, John Brennan, NIS and uh, yeah, and the NSA. Hunter Biden laptop and the article in the t in Times were that were all the big tech companies and the media basically were saying, "Yep, we colluded to you know make sure that Donald Trump lost." It's like again, we're okay. dealing with clown word logic right now. So it's well, it, your point is excellent. Right. Your point, your, these points we're bringing up are a response to your comment a little earlier about why just TikTok? How about all the land that they had China's purchased next to defense uh, sites and so forth? Your yeah. point is well received, and I think it's appropriate. But what it does is it's the tip of the iceberg. I think the, the TikTok issue is the tip of the iceberg for what's happening uh, uh, nationwide on so many fronts. I use a term you might find uh, useful in the future, Geno's three Ds, divert, distract, and deflect. If China is smart, and they are through this, this planned takeover that we're talking about, they are diverting our attention daily on issues of less substance while they perpetrate a much more egregious fraud and harm against this nation. They're doing it spiritually, they're doing it through the internet and all the technology, which you as a former CTO know better than most. Uh, uh, and they're doing it politically by trying to influence opinion uh, at the local level. You mentioned you mentioned uh, COVID briefly uh, a while back. Next week, I plan to have Dr. Malone on our show, um, who has... Um, who sets his position about anti-masking and anti-vaxxing. Uh, I was surprised with what I've, I've researched on Dr. Malone. I hope to get some clarification on it next week. But it's from his point of view, it sits against a backdrop of much greater government control. It's referred to as a mass formation psychosis, a, yep. a thinking that involves trying to control your mind so that you're willing to accept right. this this higher government agency coming in to control your data. Oh, but it's okay. We're the government. We're here to help. <laughs> right, right. What's your take on that analogy? Yeah, 100%. It's psychological warfare, as I've been saying. And this has been designed for many, many decades. Like, this is not some new paradigm that's that's coming out. Uh, when I have, there's there's individuals who speak to hacking human behavior. Have you heard of this, Gene? People talking about hacking human behavior. Hacking uh, is psychological control. Right. And most people, when they hear of hacking human behavior, they think that there's going to be like a microchip embedded in their brain that's going to force them to do this, that, or the other, right? Or that, you know, there's uh, certain chemicals or there's certain um, minerals or materials that have been ingested in our body or breathed in, and that's what's helping to manipulate our behavior. The reality is not... I don't think that that's not happening. I think anything is possible in the world that we're living in today. There's all kinds of crazy stuff that's going on. But if I know everything about you, Gene, if I know what you're buying, where you're living, who you're friends with, I've read all your text messages, I've listened to all your phone calls. We know that our phones are listening. 
all the time. You have a conversation about anything and within 24 hours, you probably see ads about it somewhere, right? So we know this thing is listening nonstop. So it knows our inflections. It knows what are, we're passionate about, knows what we're spending our time on. If I know everything about you, Gene, I guarantee you I can hack your behavior. I know exactly what to say to trigger you and get you to go off on a certain tangent or to spend a little bit more time on something or to pay attention to me or to ignore me. That's what they mean by hacking human behavior. We are a predictable species. And so when people think, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So that's what they mean. And when you have all this information, which is being harvested by these devices, it becomes very easy to mass psychosis direct people in a certain direction, right? So it's no, it's not when COVID launched and all of a sudden everybody bought into this narrative, right? And I have good friends of mine who live back in Santa Cruz, California, which is one of the most leftist liberal places in the country, hands down, right? What's interesting is they hated big government. They hated big pharma. They hated big, you know, big anything, really. They wanted to just be, let me be me. I'm going to be crazy. Leave me alone. I'm going to do my own thing, right? But when COVID hit and it was big pharma pushing it and it was big government pushing it, the entire community in Santa Cruz just bought it wholesale. They just, yes, give me more. And I would call friends and say, how are you following this? These are literally the organizations and entities that you stand diametrically opposed to. And they would say, well, my doctor told me, well, my doctor said this, well, my doctor, my doctor. And so it's interesting how they know how to attack people from every angle, no matter what demographic you're in, they've spent the money and they've spent the time to figure out exactly how to manipulate and control you. Because there's so much money at stake and there's so much at stake because we're dealing with communist terrorists who are not just Chinese, right? If you look at the the whole advent of the United Nations, it was communists that started the UN and it's communist fascists within the World Economic Forum. These are all the same ethos that is driving this agenda. So people have to just be aware that they are living in a constant bombardment of psychological warfare. And so you need to be in the word. You need to get right with God, with your faith, with your family and within yourself because you're going to be no use to anybody out there in the world until you get this stuff figured out. You know, I'm smirking because I ju- because of you, I've just figured out why I've had an appetite for so much more ice cream lately. <laughs> I keep looking at a president licking that ice cream and I go past the local ice cream shop and I say, I'm going to have one. I mean, why is this? You, you said it correctly. I don't have to buy into his, his logic. I just, I'm watching an ice cream cone getting munched on. So my wife looks at me and says, where are you going? I think I'm, t- I'm feeling like an ice cream. Well, what caused me? Now, that's that mass formation psychosis, is it? I don't know. You tell me. All I know is that I want more ice cream lately, and it never happened in previous administrations of presidents. Yeah. I think you're watching too much of Biden. You should just turn it off regardless. Well, I'm watching a conservative channel 60% of the time. And, and it's still, you're correct. Yeah. But and um, it's the fact. Hey, that's how marketing companies work. If they can repeat the message over and over and over again, regardless of it being true or not, people start to believe it. Hey, but the real remedy is what you've just done. You've helped us realize where it's coming from, right? Hey, right. folks, we're talking with Sean Patrick Terrio. Uh, what a great guy. We're having a great conversation. I thought it was going to be a deeper dive on big tech and um, and uh, the ghost phone and ghost app application. You can check it out by going to www.mark37.com. Is that right, Mark? Uh, yes, Sean? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, um, uh, is and that would be, uh, they can also contact you personally through the website as well? Yeah, so support at mark37.com. The, our key focus is helping people migrate. So right now we've got ghost phones, ghost laptops, tools, but really those may change over time as new things come out that are better for our own digital privacy and security. We're not really just in the business of selling widgets and devices. We're in the business of helping people truly migrate their lives and their businesses off of big tech. You know, big tech, I remember when I was a kid sitting in the barber shop and my dad was getting his hair cut. And so I'd read, we're talking the late 1950s, early 1960s, if that tells you my age. 
and I'm flipping through the comp, the Dick Tracy comic books. Oh, that was the big thing. If you wanted me to get a haircut, you had to get me to go down to the barbershop so I could read the Dick Tracy comic books. I was reading the Dick Tracy comic book and he came out with this watch and he's talking on this watch and talk and talking to the person and seeing the person that he's talking to. Wow, that'll never happen. And that's so far down the here it is in my same lifetime we're seeing that. Had, could anyone have imagined that uh, this came after this so that you're talking on the phone? What are you kidding me? A mobile device talking on the phone? You're crazy. And all of a sudden, not only are we talking on these devices, but as you're alluding to, government has overreached with its ability to manage the data that follows along with that conversation, which folks is what Sean Patrick Terrio was talking to us about today. Very interesting conversation. You know, the idea, and you've seen it on some of the movies of inserting a chip into your body or into your brain to capture information on face sounds like a good idea until it's in the wrong hands. Right. And would we have ever thought that our government, which we're so patriotic to and have stretched such uh, a faithful and strong beliefs in, the principles, I should say, could be or would be compromised by such bad actors, which we see before us now in government, uh, to me, uh, is what's causing everyone to scowl and saying that even though the technology's there and it's good, I don't trust the human condition. It's not that the technology is bad and dangerous. It's the use of it that's bad and dangerous. What do you say? Yeah, 100%. I mean, technology is a tool, right? So like any tool, I can have a, a hammer in my hand. And with the wrong intention, I can use that for evil and destruction. I can break things down and kill someone with it. But I can also use it to build something, right? Uh, so it's really understanding what is the intention. All things basically are energy and forms of energy. And so we have to really look at what is the intention behind the energy, whether it's our money and our currency and what we perceive to have value or our time. All these things are determined by our, our intentions, right? So if we focus on what is the intention of these tools and the people using the tools, it's very easy to see what the outcomes are going to be. Uh, so that's my take, whether we're talking about, you know, AI, artificial intelligence, which I, I hate using the term AI, but that's what people know it as, uh, because I don't think it's intelligent at all. Um, it is artificial, uh, but it's really a learning language model program. It's really just software. It's code and it's programmed to think a certain way. It's programmed to act a certain way. Humans are involved in that process, which is why we see things like, you know, you probably heard the news about Google's. AI, uh, you know, image creation thing where you would ask it to give me a picture of whatever. And it had a clear woke bias to the images that it was it was showing you. That's not because this artificial intelligence just created this thing on its own. It's because the people who programmed it gave it that bias. And and it's for exactly that reason that we must. This is where government has a role to insert itself and to legitimately regulate bad behavior, not the speech itself. This, the bad behavior would have been, if you're going to develop an AI algorithm or, 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 or logarithm of any sort, it must be free and independent of personal preference. And that means that if you're looking for a typical, if you ask AI to give you uh, the... A typical a look and appearance of a president of the United States, it shouldn't be an African tribal leader from Swahili or someplace. I mean, right. that that is not your typical looking president, uh, with no dis with no racist tones to that at all. I mean, it's just a distinction it's that doesn't. It's just data. It's reality. It's just data. That's correct. I think what we the pendulum. I pray that the pendulum swings back the other way where we capture the best of what AI and uh, artificial intelligence has to offer and marry it to rules and behaviors that are consistent with the principles and policies of this nation. So, for example, uh, you mentioned digital currency. 
Uh, the American dollar today ha- used to be backed by gold and sur- silver. Now today, it's only backed by the promise that the American government will make good on its value, that piece of paper. So my question to you is, as we move towards a more digital currency, a currency with more with with no promise in place, with just, just the guarantee or assurance that party A put a value into the hands of party B through a digital code of data is to me allowing the processor of that data to intercept the value getting from one side to the other, ergo Samuel Bankman Freed. Right. Yeah, I mean, 100%. So interesting background on me. I'm 43 now. When I was 14, my father made me sit down and watch the, I think it was like a seven set VHS series on a creature from Jekyll Island. Have you read that book? I have not. So I would highly recommend you read that book. It's called The Creature from Jekyll Island. It's Jekyll Island is an island off the coast of Georgia. It's where all of the super wealthy and elites would vacation. It's sort of like um, the Vanderbilt, you know, building in, in North Carolina or the uh, the big property compound that's out in California, whose name is escaping me right now, uh, by the big media mogul. Um, but long story short, they would all vacation there. They would all hang out there. And that's where the scheme for the, the, the Federal Reserve was hatched. And I don't know if you know this, but the Federal Reserve is neither federal nor reserve, right? So right. 1913, you know, pretty illegitimately, this bill was passed to give private interest and pi- private bankers control of our banking system. Um, so I became very much aware of money and what is money, what is currency. And I think that fundamental piece in education is lacking for the vast majority of Americans and for the vast majority of our of humans they don't understand, right? So when we look to and we say, well, what has value? And we look to the dollar and the dollar is the only thing that has value. Then everything is shaped around the vet, around the dollar, right? If it was gold, if it was silver, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, but when something is claimed to have value that is truly valueless, right? You've heard the, the chairman of the Fed basically saying, we have an infinite supply of money, Right. If you have an infinite supply of money and you're printing trillions of dollars every year, which they've been doing, right? That yeah. obviously creates an inflationary environment. But when you also realize that what gives something the a value is literally our collective consciousness agreeing that this thing has value, right? So yeah. overnight, if you push out into the consciousness that our dollar is worthless, right? You're going to see inflation continue to climb because the dollar will become more and more worthless. If you look at the actual tangible realities, and believe me, I'm not an economist, but I'm, I'm aware and I'm awake and I'm informed. If you look at what's going on in the world, the dollar is truly becoming less and less valuable globally, right? So, But that has been the reason why we've been protected as a nation for so long because other nations of the world relied on that value standard as good or bad as it was or is it um it was the basis for value to to remove ourselves as the prominent influencer of value in the world to me is is the biggest beginning of the end right but we what we haven't seen is the media pick up on this narrative yet so the media is not telling us every single day we need to be concerned because of, of BRICS, right? If you're following what BRICS is doing, they are slowly getting people off the dollar. And not solely, actually very quickly, relatively speaking, getting people off the dollar, right? So the dollar's influence globally has literally dropped off a cliff, which by any means, if, you, if we live in a pure economic model, means the dollar is exponentially worth less than it was before, Right. But the consciousness of, of, of Americans hasn't quite picked up on that yet because those alarms aren't ringing throughout the land, right? People who are awake and aware are diversifying like crazy right now. 
because they're tracking, they're following, they understand money, they understand currency, they understand value. They're starting to diversify and get off of the dollar because they realize the the million dollars they have in the bank right now might go down to ten thousand dollars worth of value within the next couple of months, which I think might happen. I think it might happen um, once they start ringing the bells. But you have to understand the Hegelian dialectic, right? So why hasn't the media been ringing this bell and sounding the alarm yet? It's because if you understand what the Hegelian dialectic is, which means you understand where you want to push people to, like COVID, we want to push people towards vaccines. We also want to push for mail-in ballots. We want to push for all these things. And we're going to use this chaos and we're going to use this major event over here to guide people towards where we want them to go, right? We're seeing that play out right now. And the second they have all the pieces of their puzzle in place to push people into the CBDCs and to push people into the social credit system, we're going to see these alarm bells go off and you're going to see all the pundits on all the different stations saying, oh my gosh, the dollar's collapsing. And then everyone's going to be running over to this new system. And they're going to say, oh, you can exchange your dollar for this new global currency or this new whatever it is, this new national digital currency, and you won't lose all your value and blah, 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 blah. So just forcing people into this. Paradigm. Now, now, would you call that part of this mass formation psychosis, which sits against the backdrop of a greater uh george soros conspiracy to take down this nation 100 percent. again it's a controlled demolition that we are watching and they it's playing out almost to a t how they want to see it play out and yet they, I, i'm not a big believer that you know this is all this is all just to wake people up and that everyone once everyone's awake we're going to be able to reclaim control of this country that's not how battles between evil and good go they're bloodbaths. You know, I hate to use the word bloodbath because it's been in the news so much, but yeah. it's going to be a bloodbath. It really will be. Uh, and evil is going to fight to the death to try to reclaim uh, and stay in control. Well, the word bloodbath was in the news for some time, even through the fake news. It wasn't until our good friend Donald Trump used it that they made something of nothing. Back on my question about Samuel Bankman Freed, how does yeah. he uh, correlate to your point you just made? Dude, he, he was a... If, if you looked at his history, and I, I happened to dig into him and knew who he was before he hit the news and whatnot, because I, I follow what's going on in the, the crypto world. Um, he's a, he's not the brightest guy. He really made his money just because he saw a very simple thing going on and that he could buy Bitcoin in Japan at a certain price. And it was trading in other markets at a you know 5 to 10% increase so if he could buy five million in bitcoin over here he could sell it for six million over there that's literally all he did to make his money and build his empire he did it enough times with enough money that he was able to build this empire and then people started just flocking and flooding attention to him because he was using his money with the intention to fund the candidates and causes that were pushing a very marxist leftist democrat agenda so they continued to prop him up Right. And if you look at who his parents are and you follow apples, don't fall too far from the tree, especially with this guy. Look at who his parents were. They are far leftist attorneys who basically helped shape his worldview. Yeah. So he was propped up and put on this pedestal, supporting and funding a lot of Democrat causes, a lot of uh, a lot of the you know, the people who are the organizations that facilitated what I would say is a lot of the fraud in the 2016 or 2020 and 2022 elections. Um, so he was put up on this pedestal and now he's been used as this, you know, scapegoat, but he's been out of the news for how long, right? Yeah. So again, if you understand how these dynamics work, he's in the news, everyone's talking about him, all this commotion about him. Oh my gosh, he should be hung for what he's done and how much money he's wasted with people, blah, blah, blah. He disappears and what we're going to see come out of this is maybe he gets a couple years worth of jail time. He's going to get some slaps on the wrist. It's going to be nothing. And he'll come out, you know, on the other end and he'll have this big PR campaign and he'll be the CEO of some new thing. Right. That's just how this clown logic clown world works right now. Yeah. But uh, Sean, there were several millions of dollars of lost money through his perpetrations of fraud yes. and deceit. Billions. billions of dollars. And as yeah. a consequence, 
I don't know how a guy, he may, he may want to stay in jail. I don't know how a guy comes out hurting so many people to such a, such a degree and thinking even after his jail term, he can live a normal life. I don't want to suggest anything other, anything else, but I'm just saying that there's been an awful lot of bad behavior out there and many have not paid uh, the price for their bad behavior. It has to start in government. We need some amendments to the constitution that penalize elected people and their staff, term limits, balanced budget, and a orientation towards America first, which I know you know something about. And we need to make sure that our nation is protected first, uh, whether that dollar is backed by gold and silver or not. And it's done, I think, with, through term limits, not just of a president, but term limits of a congressman and senators. And, uh, and to make sure that they're held accountable and that there be legal, criminal, and civil penalties against these people uh, uh, if there is proven wrongdoing that they have done that is hurting this nation. And that's what I fear most of all right now, is that from the citizens' point of view, they stop voting and just acquiesce to this deep state mantra that uh, seems to be taking over uh, because they feel that re-electing or electing a new uh, uh, a candidate into office isn't going to get them uh, the the results that need to change for the protection of our nation's nation. In the last five minutes, uh, Sean, why don't you take at it and give a little summary on your different areas of influence, your aspirations, and what you have left in your lifetime, and uh, what people can do to help you out. Sure. Well, I, I do want to comment on something that you said, because you said sure. it has to start with government. I say unequivocally, I, I cannot disagree more because <laughs> I don't think with the, I don't think anything comes with, from government. I think it starts with God and then it's us as individuals. That's correct. That's where it has to start. I mean, um, the changes he, have to occur there. We we talk to our God first and seek his advice and wisdom and uh, spiritual motivation. But I but the, if we if we're going to continue to live in a constitutional republic, whatever motivates us needs to be fixed in the in the in the governmental process. So, Gene, let me let me throw this thought experiment out for you. You can dwell on this and sit on this, and listeners can as well. But then I'll move on to the, your question here. Um, if people don't follow the Ten Commandments, and they're not following Ten Commandments, they don't even know the Ten Commandments. Do we change the Ten Commandments, or do we teach people the Ten Commandments? and hold people accountable to following the Ten Commandments? I think the answer to that is pretty obvious. You don't change the Ten Commandments just because people aren't following it, right? People need to know it and they need to follow it. So I am not a believer in changing the Constitution and updating the Constitution. I think people need to know the Constitution, which the majority of our congressional representatives, both federal and state, don't. They don't even understand the Constitution. They don't even understand that we're a constitutional republic and not a democracy. Right. They don't understand what really the difference is there. So we need to educate people on the basic foundations. And I agree with our forefathers who said that a constitutional republic in the hands of a non Judeo Christian society or non um, ethical society is basically pointless and useless. And we're seeing that play out today. Right. Today. So I fundamentally disagree that this has to start with government. I think that people believe that our rights are given to us by the government, which is not the case. In fact, it's no. the opposite. We give the government specific rights I, and I may they have, are abusing that. And so- we Well, I, under- I may have been misunderstood. I do agree with you there, yeah. but we do have a fundamental disagreement. Sean, yeah. if, if, if everything was going so well, uh, how come we're so screwed up right now? Now there's a problem that exists that needs when to be When was fixed. everything going so well? I'm just curious. Well, when, when well, you could so argue well? that going back to the establishment of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. My only comment is is that the amendments to the Constitution don't include everything. There is accountability that slips through the cracks in the governing structure, including term limits, the lack of term limits, including no no balanced budget, which is causing this cryptocurrency rise we we talked about. It, it's a, it, it's a chicken and egg thing. Which came first? 
God is where all rights stem from. We, the Constitution even writes about that, that all rights come from God. I'm totally on board with you there. But if it's silent on certain aspects of bad behavior, my only comment is, let's put something in there to fix it and, or, or to penalize the bad behavior. We can't change the Ten, ten Commandments to the, the Ten Commandments. Uh, those are written in, into law by by the Lord Himself, but we we are a failed human uh, uh, species with flaws, and we need to step up. And when we see our our flaws and correct them, and my argument would be that I think the Lord would encourage us to do that. Hundred percent. So all I'm saying is we're not following our current constitution, right? We have people who are clearly committed treason. And they're not being held accountable. We have people across the board who have violated all sorts of statutes and, and constitutional edicts that are not being held accountable. They're just not Good being point. held accountable. So Good why point. add more stuff when we're not even holding people accountable? Because it's because the Constitution the is actually silent on some of the there's no penalty for a senator or a congressman. There's no term limit for them. There's no balanced budget. Uh, the operations of government need to protect us by limiting the power some of these uh, individuals have through the silence in the Constitution in not addressing them. That's my only point. But I'm totally on board with you from a spiritual point of view. And, you know, um, things have amassed. Uh, the, the Constitution didn't have the understanding. I referred earlier to the Dick Tracy watch. It didn't understand Dick Tracy <laughs> and the speed of a of a, an ability to to move as fast as we are in today's world through the streaming networks on the internet and web based activity that uh, uh, obsoletes things of just ten years ago. My only comment is is that we fix our operations of government to be more responsive, and this is happening through the grace of God and the power He's given us to fix ourselves. That's all I'm saying. Gotcha. And we don't need to keep going down that path. But as it relates to me, I, I want to build a very large business that is focused on helping people and helping new companies that are emerging that have great solutions that help people migrate off of Google and Apple and Microsoft and Amazon and these big tech companies, Silicon Valley woke corporations. If you follow the money, you start to realize what's driving them. Um, into companies and move our dollars and our attention and our time and our resources and our energy into businesses that are actually on the same team, that are fighting the same fight as we are, so that they can leverage that energy to support the candidates and causes and organizations that are also on the same team fighting the same fight. So that's where people need to realize our dollars are our ammo, our time and our energy is our ammunition that we can use in this war. And we have to be very, you know, let's not pretend that these devices are not a major, major part of the problem. Absolutely. So I, Sean Patrick Terrio in our last 60 seconds, tell everybody where they can find you and how they can jump into this, uh, being part of the militia on this war against these wrongdoers. Yeah, so you can find me online. Uh, if you go to our website, mark37.com, scroll down to the bottom, you can see our Telegram link and our Rumble and Twitter and all the true social and whatnot. We're on all these different platforms. If you just look mark37.com on them, you'll find us. You can reach out to us at support at mark37.com. I also travel the country nearly every week. I'm in a different city somewhere, either doing training, uh, speaking, or we've got a booth somewhere talking to, and educating people on how they can make this transition. I have a whole three, four hour long recorded video of me doing my training that's on our website that you can find uh, that I encourage people, implore people to go and check out so you can learn all the different ways we're getting screwed by big tech and all the different things that we can do to get off of their platforms. I submit, sir, we've had a very good conversation. It's constructive and even differences of opinion were well managed in a civil sense. Thank you for joining me today. Bless you. Thank you, Gene. I, I thank you very much. And I thank you folks for joining me and Sean Patrick Tario on another episode of Gene Valentino's Grassroots Truthcast. Please subscribe, share this episode with your friends, contact Sean if you'd like to work on his initiatives, and uh, see you here again sometime soon. Take care now. 
Thanks for joining us for Gene Valentino's Grassroots Truthcast. Be sure to like and subscribe, and God bless America.